This video is going to be an update to my LM317 high current source regulation circuit. Let us understand a few things right off the bat. This circuit is experimental. Uh, it works quite well, but there are limitations. First of all, we note the PNP transistor. As the transistor gets hot, its beta is going to drift slightly, not that great. And that's going to vary IC somewhat, but it's not a ridiculous amount. This is an experimental circuit. This is to be used as really as a current limiter. The other issue to clear up is a lot of people are confusing a current regulator with a voltage regulator. This regulates current. The voltage across the load is determined by the load resistance, not by the current regulator, which fixes your output current known as IC. Let me explain a little closer how this happens by looking at common series resistor circuits. Look at this example circuit just before we go any further. Here I have set R1 as 10 ohms and R2 as 14 ohms. So our total resistance is R1 plus R2, 24 ohms. If I want to get the current, which you see here, and note the current through R1 equals the current through R2, we would have to divide the 24 volts input by the R total, which is 24 ohms, so it's 1 amp. So our current is 1 amp through R1, 1 amp to R2. What's the voltage across each resistor? This divides according to resistance. So the voltage across R1 is 1 amp times 10 ohms is 10 volts. The voltage across R2 is 1 amp times 14 ohms, it's 14 volts. If you add the two voltage drops together, 10 plus 14 volts, it always equals back to the voltage in. This you have to keep in mind. This second example, this time I've set R1 to 5 ohms and R2 to 7 ohms, and that's going to give me a total resistance of 12 ohms. Divide 12 ohms into 24 volts, that's going to give me 2 amps. What is my voltage across R1? That's going to be 2 amps times 5 ohms, that's going to be 10 volts. And the voltage across R2 is 2 amps times 7 ohms, that's 14 volts. 10 volts plus 14 volts equals 24 volts. Let's note something here first of all. I change my I. In a constant current source circuit, you can change resistance, but you can't change the I. Something I didn't bring up before is wattage. At 2 amps, you would multiply the voltage drop across the resistor times the current. So the voltage drop across R1 at 10 volts times 2 amps is dropping 20 watts. R2, which is 7 ohms for 14 volts, is dropping 28 watts. So your voltage divides according to resistance, but your power also divides according to resistance. The total watts, that's 2 amps times 24 volts is 48 volts, is split between R1 at 20 watts and R2 at 28 watts. 20 plus 28 is 48 watts. All right, let's take a look at this sort of stripped down version of my current regulator circuit. Here I'm going to concentrate on Q1, which is a PNP transistor. As far as current, I'm going to disregard IB for the most part. And uh, your output current IC is equal to IB times HFE. So 
in this case I'm going to argue that I have an IC fixed at 1 amp. So I have 1 amp of current flowing through this load. The load is 12 ohms. Okay, the voltage across the load is 12 volts times 1 amp equals 12 volts. How much power is being dissipated by the load? 1 amp times 12 volts is 12 watts. But what happened to the rest of the wattage and voltage? That is dropped by Q1. The voltage emitter collector, emitter collector on Q1 equals 24 volts, that's Vn, minus V load equals 12 volts. So the power dissipation approximately of Q1 is VEC times I total, again I'm disregarding IB, is 12 watts. So I have dropped half my power across Q1 and half my power across the load. These, this is a linear circuit. This is not a switching regulator. This is a linear circuit. And keep in mind, this is a current regulator, not a voltage regulator. The output voltage across R load is determined by the resistance of R load, as where the total available current is limited by Q1. Keeping in mind the previous frame, let's change R load to 2 ohms. Of course, this is not going to affect IC. It's going to remain fixed at 1 amp. So V load, that's 2 ohms times 1 amp is 2 volts. 1 amp times 2 volts is 2 watts. Well, guess what happened to all of the other power and voltage? Okay. VEC equals 24 volts minus V load, which is 2 volts, is 22 volts. The power dissipation of Q1 is VEC times, uh, times uh, 22 volts. That's one, that's 1 amp times 22 volts is 22 watts. So what have you got here? Eh, you're not using much power at all in the load, 2 watts. You are heating up Q1 like crazy. You can't change the current. That's why they call it a constant current source. But if you're using a ridiculously high input voltage relative to your load resistance, this thing is going to get red hot. And it doesn't make any sense to do that. I'll, my advice is to use a switching regulator to drop the voltage. If all you're going to use is, say, 2 or 5 volts or something like that, drop this to, say, 7 or 8 volts, maybe no more than 10. And that will massively, and you'll still get your 1 amp, you just won't be burning up so much energy as heat in Q1. So keep that in mind. Be reasonable with it. Your load resistance determines your, vol your actual voltage on the load based on IC. If the voltage across the load is really low relative to Vn, use a smaller Vn. Again, this is linear. This is not switching. What's the advantage over a linear regulator? It's usually less noise. Switching regulators are more efficient, but they generally introduce noise. So, that gives you some idea of what's involved here. Let's, um, let's move on. All right, one last issue we must address before we leave this video is what happens if I try to re if I try to current regulate a load whose resistance is so high that the voltage really comes out higher than Vn, it won't work. Let's look at it this way. If I see it, we try to set it for 1 amp and the load is 48 ohms, well 1 amp times 48 ohms is 48 volts. You will get no current regulation, it's just a now it's just a resistive circuit. 
and not a very good one at that. So be aware that your IC or your um, current total times your load exceeds VN, it will not regulate. In fact, you don't want to go right up to 24 volts across the load. You want to keep it down, my guess, no higher than 80% of VN. So you want a um, V load no higher than 80% of VN. So be aware of that. Now you can return to the rest of this circuit. It's in part two. With this in mind, this should help you to better understand what is going on in part two that explains the full circuit. So thanks for listening. Visit my website uh, at www.bristolwatch.com and uh, visit um, part two to understand how this circuit works totally. And there's a separate video that shows the live circuit itself. And the point with the live circuit is I managed to correct the audio problems from earlier. So thanks for listening.